so the audience of this podcast may not know much about jujitsu, or they do because it's really part of the culture now, but they don't yeah. really know much. They see that so many people have fallen in love with it, have been transformed through it, but they don't know much about like, what is this thing? Is there a way you could sort of try to explain the what is jujitsu, what is the essence of this martial art that's captured the minds and hearts of so many people in the world? I think that jujitsu is is a philosophy that's expressed physically and that it's the kind of development of the mental capacity and physical capacity working in, in unison to uh, move efficiently and almost flowingly, unresistingly um, with, with a given situation, with a, with a physically resisting opponent. Um, learning how to generate force on your own and how to steal force from the floor, how to steal force from the other person and move in concert with it as opposed to clash against, which if you watch two untrained people fight, it's almost entirely a clash. It's a runaway and clash, a runaway and clash. Um, if you watch jujitsu done well, it's, it, it looks like water moving around a solid structure. And, and I think that that is expressed physically. And I think that all of the things that anyone has really been able to do very, very well in, in jujitsu end up kind of exemplifying that. But I think that that's true of martial arts in general. I think that a lot of times like the clashing that we see going on um, and working well is just the fact that, you know, you get very, very physically powerful people every now and then they're able to get away with this. But I don't think that that's and that's that's fantastic because ultimately it's a results driven thing. But I think that the essence of the martial arts is learning how to make more out of less and how to move with and be yielding, you know, almost like real life Aikido. And uh, so you think of martial arts, uh, jujitsu, as uh, like water or flowing. So Aikido, so moving around the the force as opposed to sort of maybe the wrestling mindset is finding a leverage where you can apply an exceptional amount of force. So like so like maximizing the application of force. I guess maybe that's a better way to, I'd like to marry the two ideas, you know, because I think you flow until the point at which you are the greater force, at which point in time you can apply. But uh, if we look at the best wrestlers, and then when I say best, I don't necessarily mean most successful, although of course, most successful are, are always very, very good. Um, throughout the course of history in boxing, in wrestling, in judo, um, they, they're magical. They, they disappear and reappear. It's like fighting a ghost that that is like incorporeal when you want to find it, but then when you don't want it to find it, when you don't want to find it, it finds you. And uh, I, I think that we see that in the, like the Buvais Arsaitivs of wrestling. Um, and, you know, I guess you, you could look at a uh, Floyd Mayweather or Willie Pep or, uh, you know, Pernell Whitaker in boxing um, as, as brilliant examples of disappearing and reappearing. And when you're strong, it's almost like guerrilla warfare. When you're strong, I'm nowhere to be found. When you're weak, you can't get rid of me. And I, I think that's what we're looking for. Yeah, the Satya brothers are incredible at that. They just, they, they look like uh, skinny Starbucks baristas and uh, they just, manhandle everybody like effort effortlessly they look like they just kind of woke up yeah rolled out of bed uh, fighting for like the, the the gold medal at the olympics and just effortlessly throw uh like th there's a match against you i guess yo romero yeah so like you you know if, if you look at like who is the guy who's like intimidating in this case uh and terrifying looking it's uh it's it's yo romero just like a physical specimen, and obviously like a super accomplished wrestler. I think this is for the gold medal, yeah. In 2000. Yeah, 2000. Yeah. yeah, Sydney. And then there. Yeah, this is the year you all took silver. And what you see, like, <laughs> just to sh just show you like, there's a inside trip, effortless. Uchi, and he, he does it again. Yep. You know, it's a really creative kind of wrestling where. It's organic. You, yeah, you throw in all these kinds of things. This is a mix of judo, a mix of like weird kind of moves. It's not like as funky as uh, Ben Askren. It's it's just like legitimate 
basic. Well, it's not funky for funky's sake, and I'm not, I'm not poking right. Ben Askren to imply that, that that's what he's doing. But it's like it's it's funny. It's like a lot of times it's almost like uh, Musashi talked a lot about that. You know that the only goal of combat is to win. Is the the outcome is it's outcome driven versus like flourishing. You know, cool looking movements. It's like unless that had a, a utilitarian purpose. Like what are you what are you wasting your time with that? Yeah. Both in the fight and also you know in, in practice. But but as you mentioned, it's almost like it looks like judo. It looks like wrestling. It looks like jujitsu. It's almost like I guess r the reminds me all of the martial arts is again deeply tribal as well. I I want to learn Lex Fridman martial arts, and then I want to learn another you know I guess transcendent person's martial arts, and it just happened to be the set of movements that you tended to do most of the time thanks to your body type and your opposition and whatnot. But then I try to codify that and force those to work as opposed to going. I want to understand how the body works in concert and in in Congress with something else and other forces and move appropriately. And that's why it's like, it always struck me that the Scythe brothers are great examples of just moving like water, but they, to, to use Bruce Lee, which is a little trite, but again, he's brilliant. It's like water can flow or water can crash and they would crash when they needed to crash and they would flow when they needed to flow, but they would flow for the purpose of dissipating and then crash when they would win and at the right moment, then go back to flowing the second that the other person found them. And it's just, it's beautiful to watch. It's artistic. And I think that that great expression of anything physical is ultimately studied as a science, but expressed as an art. And I think that that's something that gets lost in jujitsu a lot of times when it gets a little bit, a little nerdy, like do this hand here, hand here. Like if like, the more details I have, the better. When in reality, that's just not in, not in my experience how it's done.